makes things work. Soybeans have been around for a long time. Uh, the Chinese explored the world 1420, and what did they do? They grew soybeans on the ships. Uh, soybeans are almost a perfect food. 22 amino acids in it, and it's got a lot of uh, other characteristics. Antiviral, anti-allergy, anti-inflammatory, vasodilator, highly anti-cancer. U.S. government learned that if we're going to send a man to the moon, you have to be able to feed them. And so they plan to farm soybeans on a spaceship. That's the way that uh, they think they would be able to do it. Now, the nature of cancer uh, is uh, down to one common principle. Cancer cells don't die. Uh, and the nature of that is in DNA damage. Now, we know that DNA damages causes various diseases. If we take a group of people with uh, multiple sclerosis and test them, we will find all of them have damage in the same sets of genes. Uh, damage in humans in those sets of genes produces symptoms we call multiple sclerosis. We can do the same thing for other diseases. But when we look at the cancer patient, we see that the cell does not die its normal death, which uh, is referred to as apoptosis. Now, the way we get cancer is basically two ways. One, there can be a, a hereditary predisposition to a disease. For instance, uh, if we have a, uh, a cell which starts as a fetus, when it goes 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, that's a very dangerous time because we can have a mistake in the DNA replication. And children who inherit only one of the P53 genes from one parent instead of both they get cancers in young age. Uh, the P53 gene is a protein. Uh, proline is a principal constituent. That mixes with the DNA, breaks down to a P21. That stops the uncontrolled replication of cells. So we can see that if a child inherits only one of the P53 genes, he will have difficulty stopping tumors from growing because he doesn't have enough P53 in his, in his system to mix with uh, uh, the DNA to produce the P21. Uh, other pre uh, hereditary diseases would be women with what are called BRCA, damage in breast area. Those are primarily in Scotland. 50% of those have breast cancer by the time they age 50. Uh, a report in WebMD uh, almost a year ago showed that a group of women uh, were healthy. They gave them mammograms. Six months later, 49% had breast cancer. The conclusion was that it needed more frequent mammograms in order to catch the cancer early, whereas the mammograms are what triggered the uh, additional DNA damage that produced uh, the malignancies in those women. So the uh, way that we, as speaking of, of a group without a predisposition to get cancer, need to recognize that we have a normal cell. In that cell, we have the DNA. The DNA gets damaged over 10,000 times in every cell in each and all of us. That gets repaired in less than 15 minutes when we're young. If it doesn't get repaired in two hours, it doesn't get fixed. The chromosomes have the responsibility to repair the DNA. Problem is, uh, the carcinogens, which or anything that damages DNA, also damage chromosomes. When it damages the chromosomes, the chromosomes don't fix the DNA. That cell gets a little de-differentiated. As that cell uh, takes additional uh, DNA damage uh, and becomes further de-differentiated, we get damage in uh, the genes that control the lifespan of that cell. Every cell in you will live or die depending on the uh, gene expression between a pro-apoptosis gene, which is named Bax, and an anti-apoptosis gene, which is BCL2. So if we get decreased gene expression in the pro-apoptosis gene, that reduces the likelihood that that cell will die. Also, we can get increased in the gene expression in the uh, anti-apoptosis gene, BCL2. That makes that cell less likely to die, or we can have a combination of damage in both of those. So we can see that the problem is the cancer cell doesn't die. So in treating the cancer patient, we try to go ahead and, and get that cell to restore its normal death. Or if we look at conventional medicine, there are uh, uh, some drugs that are used in, in that. Now, some of them will uh, reduce the gene expression in the uh, anti-apoptosis gene. A few will increase the uh, other 
problems. Most want it with multidrug resistance. Uh, the NCI put out a report about uh, uh, three months ago stating that the reason why chemotherapy was not killing more cancer cells was because of the multidrug resistance. And so we see that uh, uh, chemotherapy is important, but we also have a non-toxic non way of doing that is to shut off the blood supply that feeds the tumors. There are over 70 drugs on the market being tested which will shut off the blood supply feeding tumors. Uh, Judah Folkman at Harvard had uh, worked for 40 years on anti-angiogenesis, uh, and uh, uh, they are now introducing several uh, compounds in the system uh, in the medical community. Uh, they did not do very well with itself as a sole therapy, but they're trying to use that along with chemotherapy. The chart we're seeing is involving a breast tumor uh, 16 days later with a concentrated fermented soy beverage, one eight ounce bottle a day for 16 days. Top left slide is showing the blood supply feeding the tumor May 26th in a biopsy. Uh, the center top is the blood vessels feeding that blood to the tumor. And on the right, we see the DNA in the tumor. Bottom, uh, we see 16 days later after one eight ounce bottle a day of a concentrated fermented soy beverage. That shows it shut off the blood supply feeding the tumor. It destroyed the blood vessels feeding the blood to the tumor and reversed the DNA back to normal. So anti-angiogenesis is a uh, non-toxic way of helping to shrink tumors, and that is uh, expected to, p to play a major role in the future in cancer treatment. Now, 80% of advanced cancer patients die from cachexia. Uh, there are more than 15 million uh, people a year that are diagnosed with cancer, uh, and as they progress, we can see that uh, some get worse, some uh, actually have benefits from conventional treatments. But conventional treatments cure less than 50% of the people. For those who are not cured, what they're concerned about is first, how long am I going to live? Second is what is the quality of life going to be? Six million uh, deaths a year involved from cancer, which amounts to 12% uh, worldwide. Now, cachexia is caused by DNA damage. It's not a question of calories. Uh, if we are to look at that, uh, we see there's a gene which is MYOD. MYOD allows us to, be, to build lean muscle mass. That gets damaged by uh, tumor necrosis factor, nuclear factor kappa beta, and uh, uh, when that happens, that person's going to die unless you can reverse that. It's not a question of calories. You can give them uh, more calories, more input, but they cascade downward. Now, the soy compounds shut off nuclear factor kappa beta 100%. That is also the mutation pathway that, that cancer cells use as a, as a path. Uh, also, the interferon uh, Y is reduced with the soy compounds, and it also affects the uh, uh, tumor necrosis factor downward. So we see that we can stop the uh, uh, cascading downward of the uh, cachexia that kills 80% of advanced cancer patients. Now, an example of this, uh, uh, years ago, I had a hospital who had six uh, cancer patients, all had one week or less to, to uh, live, non-responsive to any form of conventional therapy, uh, and uh, the hospital administrator gave them uh, you know, a fermented soy beverage. Four out of six were up out of the bed on the feet in three days. One more within five, one died. Took two more just like it. Two out of two were up out of the bed on the feet in three days, and they were still alive five years later. He turned seven out of eight in an impossible category, and so we don't recognize that we are spending too much effort on shrinking the tumor rather than uh, strengthening the patient. Now, chemotherapy... Uh, uh, is often misunderstood as far as how effective it is. In this area, uh, we have a report on the understanding uh, the effectiveness of chemotherapy drugs. Now, Sidney Farber, uh, Dana Farber Hospital, is named after him. That's a large cancer center in, in the United States. He uh, studied eight chemotherapy drugs. One was 100% effective, one was 75% effective, one was 50% effective, the other one was 54.7% uh, effective. 